Walking in the realm of Christ, part two. Let my clock go. Colossians 2, verse 6 to verse 10. As you therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord. Never forget, he's the Lord. He is the owner. That's what that means. As you receive him, the owner of everything. So walk you in him. So... And then rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you. Don't let nobody spoil you from this truth I'm sharing with you. Through philosophy, cleverness, vain deceit, after the tradition of men, and after the rudiments, the systems of this world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, which is ahead of all principality and power. Praise God for the reading of his word. Number one, you received Christ Jesus as your Lord, not just as your Savior, but as your Lord and Savior, as your Lord, he, is your, he, he owns you. He owns your family. He owns your business. He is the owner of everything. He died so he could take back creation, so creation can belong to God. And now the devil is a liar. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is Lord, not the devil. Jesus is owner, not the devil. But the balance of power is in your hands because you are Christ's body in the earth. If you don't awaken to the lordship of Jesus or the ownership of Jesus, then the devil goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But once you enlightened, once you know that he is a toothless devil, he's got no more weapons. The only thing he can deceive you to make you guilty, to make you feel inferior, but Jesus has taken the keys of death, and hell out of him. Therefore, he cannot cause people who are enlightened to die before their time. He cannot cause people to go to hell because Satan is not the determining factor. Jesus is the owner. As you receive Christ Jesus, not just Jesus, Christ. There's three phases to Christ. There is the pre-incarnate Christ that John says in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. All things were made by him and without him there was nothing made that was made. That's John 1.1. 1, 1. Put it back on there. Flow with me, please. John 1.1. 1, 1. I want to get into the eye gate. You're preaching with me. Don't go to sleep now. John 1.1. 1, 1. Come, somebody go and help him quickly. You got it? In the beginning was. Go to the beginning and go to was. The word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. All things were made by him. The word is a him. And without him, I'm talking about the pre-incarnate Christ. I'm talking about a Christ before the birth from the Virgin Mary. Without him, the word, there was nothing made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. That life is what shines in your heart and dispels darkness so you can understand. Because the entrance of thy word giveth light and 
understanding to the simple. So that is the pre-incarnate Christ. He was God. He is God. He's never ceased to be God. But then there is the incarnate Christ when he was born as a man. He came through the same doorway you came through, the womb of a woman. He came through the womb of Mary to fully experience you and totally identify himself with you. And that is called the incarnation of God. God became a man. God came into man. And the purpose of that is that man would experience God's humanity while God experiences your humanity. Jesus became a man, born as a man. His name was the son of man and experienced your whole life, entered into death to even experience the death of a man by being made sin and separated from God with your sin, your sickness, your poverty, and he fully experienced that from his birth to his death. However, he overcame it all in his humanity as a son of man, so you as a son of man can experience Jesus' life as a son of man without any sin. So you partake of Jesus' humanity. That is called the incarnation of God. But on the third day, when the justice of God was satisfied, the spirit of God, the spirit of resurrection. You see, he was made in the flesh as the son of David. He was made in the flesh as the son of Abraham. However, when his flesh, his humanity died because he laid down his life for you, he didn't lay down his life for you complaining. He never said, it is so painful. That is why the Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, he despised the shame, and he's now set down at the right hand of the Father. When you love with the love of God, there is no sacrifice that is painful. When you love with the love of God, there is no sacrifice that's too much for you to pay. In fact, the more I sacrifice now out of a heart of love, the more joy there is to sacrifice. And if you do it in your own strength, you will feel limited. If you do it in your own strength, you'll feel a struggle. But if you do it through Christ, who strengthens you with Christ being your life, other people will see you doing things and working for God and think, I wonder how he does it. And Paul put it like this, I labor striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. The whole difference that makes a difference is for you to experience that incarnated life of God becoming a man and making that incarnation 
your life. However, when he died, the spirit of holiness resurrected his humanity, not his divinity. Because the divine God can never be made sin, can never die. Jesus never ceased to be God when he hung on the cross. It's a mystery of godliness. The cross is the power of God and it is the wisdom of God. And he had a card under his sleeve that got the devil stumped. Just when he thought, I've got humanity dead. The Son of God in the Son of Man resurrected his humanity and Jesus was the first born among the dead. The tomb became the womb and the death tomb opened up and Jesus came through as the head and once the head comes through, no part of the body can remain in the womb anymore. Once the head came through, the many-membered body came through, and Jesus became the firstborn of many brethren. Therefore, he's not ashamed to call you my brother. Think about it. Jesus is not ashamed to call you brethren. You should never ever be ashamed or belittled or feel it's too much for you to know I'm born of Jehovah. Jesus is my big brother. I'm an heir of God and I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I inherit God so I can be the image of God and like God and whatever Jesus inherited, including the name of Jesus, is my inheritance. He gives me the power of attorney to use his name to do greater works than he did because he went to the throne and poured the Spirit of God down. Never forget that. There are three phases to the Christ life. The pre-incarnate Christ, the incarnate Christ, but the third phase is the glorified Christ. He rose again from the dead with a glorified human body. Ooh. This body was sown in dishonor because of your sin and my sin. But now the new body is raised in honor. The only thing that he kept in his new body as trophies is holes in his hands, a hole in his side, and holes in his feet, even in his glorification, to reveal to you that the work of the cross is an eternal glorification of God. So when he rose again from the dead, you rose together with him. When he ascended to the throne, you ascended together with him. The only problem is your mind can't compute it, but your spirit says amen to it. As soon as your mind can compute it, then the darkness has come out of your mind and you can believe it. I want to read this in Colossians 3.1 to verse 3. If you then be risen with Christ, are you risen with Christ? Is that, is that a fact for you? Is that a revelation? That when Jesus rose from the dead, 
you conquered death. When Jesus conquered the devil, you conquered the devil. And if you be risen with Christ, see there's that word if, meaning maybe you're not totally convinced of this. But tonight you're going to be totally convinced. And you're going to celebrate Christmas as one that has conquered death, hell, and the grave in the name of Jesus. Hand of God. Christ is no more operating from a position of being separated from God. He's no more operating from a position of being made poor. He's no more operating from a position of being made a curse with your sin, your poverty, your curse. He's operating from a position of glorification with a glorified body. Your spirit man is now glorified in the image of God and his glory is in you for the purpose of an ongoing glorification in your flesh. That's why we are being changed from glory to glory by the spirit of the living God. So if you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sits to the right hand of the Father, set your affection. Let that be your enjoyment. The, another translation is set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth, not on poverty, not on COVID-19, not on sickness, not on poverty. Not on fail. Don't set your mind on those stats that Pastor Dale read to you. They are real, but they are on the, of the earth. That's not of heaven. You've got to set your mind on things that are above, not on things in the earth. Amen. While you are in the earth, and you live in the earth, but your mind is that you are seated with Christ, living from heaven while you're in the earth. You're not an earthly citizen trying to be a heavenly citizen. You have a passport and identity document in heaven, your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, in the blood of Jesus. So you are a diplomat in the earth as an ambassador for Christ. You're going to have to get that understanding. Why? For you are dead. You are dead. And yet your life, <laughs> you're dead and your life. You're dead and your life. It's a mystery. You see, when Jesus died, his humanity died. But when he rose again, his humanity rose again. Now you have a God man who is man and God on the throne. And his spirit of God and man is in you. Therefore, he is your life. So you died with him on the cross, that old Adam. And now you are part of the last Adam. God only deals with two fathers. The first Adam with the fallen race. The last Adam with the heavenly race. Oh, Jesus, you are dead and your new life, your life is now hidden with Christ in God. That's the mystery of God-likeness. That my life, your life, is hidden from the devil. Is hidden from world systems. It's hid with Christ. Right in God. If the devil should get your life, he'll have to go through God. If the devil should get your life, he'll have to go 
through Christ who conquered him. And there's no such a thing that can happen. So God wants you to operate from a position of wholeness, peace, completeness, prosperity, that no human being can touch my life without God's permission. No pandemic can touch my life without God's permission. Only if you're careless and you don't take the vaccine. <laughs> Only if you're careless and you don't do social distancing, then don't come in the back and say, look what pastor said, so and so died. It's your carelessness that he killed you. And therefore the Bible says, don't be slothful. Change unkondowako. Come with tatum job. Ubabo kulumanao. Monday, make your appointment and go and get your jab. It's a right thing to do. It's a God thing to do. You're doing it to protect your family. And I'm going to get the booster as well. In Jesus' name. Now let me read this in the Amplified because it's the last night. Can I take five, ten minutes extra? True, you're enjoying the meal. You all okay with that? It's, it's a last night. You know the last night is a wonderful night in the name of Jesus. Why? He saves the best for last in the name of Jesus and you'll never be the same again today. Now, let me read it from the TPT. Christ's resurrection is your resurrection too. Can you see the double O? Two, I feel like putting a third one and a fourth one for you. So when Christ rose from the dead, you rose from the dead, or else you could never be born again. What else? This is why we are to yearn for all that is above. I love that word, yearn. For that's where Christ sits, enthroned at the place of all power honor and authority now if you are seated with him you are also enthroned at the place of all power all honor he crowns you with glory and honor and all authority he said is given unto him not only in the earth in heaven in earth under the earth his name is above every name, and he's given you his name. But it'll only work to the degree of your understanding. To the degree that your faith can link you that his name represents all that he is and all that he's accomplished. Just saying the name of Jesus doesn't make the difference. It's your faith that links you to who he is and what he's done. And that's why it's so important. Yes, verse 2. Feast on all the treasures of the heavenly realm and fill your thoughts with heavenly realities and not with the distractions of the earthly realm. Don't allow your mind to be distracted. That is why the Bible teaches the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Every time you get angry, you nullify your righteousness. That's why you need a self-controlled life. And if you do get angry, Run back to God. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. 
because anger nullifies. Don't get angry with me. I'm here to help you. Some people get angry if I correct them. Angry. <laughs> Don't get angry if I correct you. I'm helping you. You're going the wrong direction. I have to correct you. You got angry with your earthly father. Now you come treat me as though I'm your earthly. I'm not your earthly father. Your earthly father shows you where you come from. This guy is showing you where you're going to. Don't treat me like I, I, I'm responsible where you come from. Uh -uh. I'm responsible to take you where you've never been. That's your heavenly father and that's me. So don't get angry with me. Don't get angry with my preaching. Don't get angry with everything. Don't be quick to respond in aggression. Stop it now. Christmas is knocking on the door in Jesus' name. A great gift is given to us. Don't be distracted. Your crucifixion with Christ has severed, cut off the tie to this life. And now your true life is hidden away in God, in Christ. Understand what the old life is and what the new life is. Understand this old life. Pelel. Bye-bye, James. Don't want you no more. Hello. New today and tomorrow is my life. In Jesus' name. That's what Christmas is all about. I'm celebrating Christ. Jesus. And as Christ himself is seen for who he really is. When you see who he really is. Who you really are will also be revealed. And you are one with him in his glory. When you get revealed, because he is seen for who he really is, <laughs> you are also now one with him in his glory. Let's read it in the Amplified Bible. The mouth of two or three witnesses. Let every truth be established. If you have been raised with Christ to a new life, thus sharing his resurrection from the dead, aim at and seek it must be your target. You must have that dark, bored, bull eye. Or else if you blindfold, you'll miss the whole board. Miss the whole board. But if you know that's the bull's eye, your aim is your life. You are the dart. You are the arrow that God has released to hit a bull's eye. But the trouble is, you're blind in your mind, but not from tonight. The understanding, the eyes of your understanding are enlightened that you may know the hope of his calling. That's what this heavenly calling is all about. You've been raised with Christ to a new life, thus sharing resurrection from the dead. Aim, 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 aim your life. Seek, aim and seek. The rich, eternal treasures that are above 
where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And the Amplified got Psalm 110 verse 1. You studied that this week. Study Psalm 110. And set your minds and keep them set on what is above. The higher things, not the things that are on the earth. For as far as this world is concerned, you have died. Is our life appears, then you also will appear with him to verse 6. And I close. Eh? Tuesday, 10 o'clock, I'll see you in the spirit. I'll be watching my TV, but I'll see you if you tuned in. And I'll see you again on Saturday at 6 o'clock. Then tune in next week, Friday, because I'll be in Lindelani. Tune in on Saturday morning and Saturday night because I'm at the Olive Convention Center. And then Sunday morning, glory, hallelujah, is going to come down. Yeah, Sunday morning, you cannot stay home because you're bung of COVID-19. Your bung broke you. What's wrong with you? Wake up. Cast the spirit of fear out. Cast death out. Worried about me? No, don't worry about this colored fellow that became a God fellow. Worried other pastors died. This pastor didn't die. What's wrong with you? I'm hidden with Christ in God. Don't be afraid of me. I don't need you to be afraid of me, of what's going to happen to me. And all the people who are coming here, none of them will die because of the word I preach. But they will live and declare the goodness of the Lord. And whoever is inflicted with this new strain right now, Veloshni, I break the power of COVID-19 over your life in the name of Jesus. And I release you from the shackles of the strain and you will isolate yourself and you are free in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you are free. And anyone who is associated with me in this ministry is freed up in Jesus' name. Second Corinthians 4, 3. But if our gospel, if my gospel our gospel is hid. It's hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Can you see a blind mind cannot believe? Can you see that? A blind mind is one that got darkness in the understanding. And who's done that? The God of darkness. He's blinded the minds of them which believe not. The reason you can't believe what I'm saying, your mind is darkened. Don't you understand? <laughs> I speak light, life, understanding into your mind. In the name of Jesus. If Jesus was here, you think he'll be staying home for the service here? I'll just watch it on online. Jesus, do that for COVID? Wow, I sound like Apostle Colin Lafoy too. Huh? My voice becomes like my father. You heard him on Sunday in that morning. Because I hear him in me. You hearing me in you. I'm your father. I'm my life source to you. In the name of Jesus. You think the Apostle Paul would have watched online like you and leave the church to come to service? Get cross and get over it. Whoever you are, get over it in the name of Jesus. Do you think the early church, born in the fire of God, you want revival, move of God, do you think they would stay at home? And watch online instead of coming together? No. 
I'm not going to stay at home. I'm not a bangbrook. I'm not frightened. I'll pull you out of the coffin too. And slap you and make you stand too. In the name of Jesus. I'm not frightened of death. Because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. Do you receive that tonight? He's blinded the minds of them which believe not. A blind mind is impossible to believe. Lest when you believe the light of the glorious gospel. Who is the image of God. Should shine into you. Can you see what you build spell the darkness? For we preach, not ourselves. I'm not preaching Basil Trine, son of George Trine, grand, my grand. Such a little in so many circles of Christ. It's about money. It's about success without Christ. It's not Christ-centered. There's no supremacy of Christ in so many circles of preaching. But if you come here, and I'm not putting a feather in my cap, God has called me to dispense Christ to you. And that's what I'm preaching. I'm dispensing Christ to you. And if you get Christ's glory, you'll get all the money in the world that you cannot handle. You'll have to just dish it out. Give it to New Covenant Fellowship. We'll do something valuable with it. The light of the glorious gospel of Christ. Who is the image of God? If I preach a gospel that doesn't cause you to be the image of God, I'm not preaching Christ. The glorious gospel is the image of God. And if I preach you the image of God, this glory will shine in you. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the owner, the Lord, (laughs) to give the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And we'll continue this message on Sunday morning. Have you received something from the Lord tonight? Are you blessed with the word? Will you stand and allow me to pray for you and issue some commands in the name of Jesus? You will not struggle to believe this word. I command the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ in the face of Jesus to shine all darkness to dispel from your mind, dispel from your unconscious mind, dispel from your heart that you would be a written epistle of Christ known and read of all men. In the mighty name of Jesus, I dispel sickness out of your life. I dispel poverty out of your life. I dispel the marks of the curse out of your life. I dispel the work of Satan out of your life. And the only true gospel of Christ, shining the glory of God, remains in your life. You are the light of the world, bringing out the God colors of the world, And you are the salt of the earth, bringing out the God flavors of the earth. Today, your light has come. You will celebrate Christmas this year with the glory of the Lord shining round about. Just like when Jesus, the Son of God, the Son of Man, was born out of the womb of a woman. The glory of the Lord has come. Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you and nothing of the 
devil can penetrate the bloodline and the glory line of God. Your life is hid with Christ in God. Father, seal this word in everyone's heart. And they go from here without no spirit of fear, but just love and the reasoning of a sound mind. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to